Hello everybody and welcome to Marcus Reviews Movies. The very first episode and we chose no better actor to highlight than Nicolas Cage. A movie made in 2023 was actually good. I'm here to tell you that when you are going to spend money on a movie, at least make it worth it. And in 2023, it's harder and harder to find movies that are worth your time, energy, and money. Well, this show is about to change all of that. I want to introduce you to Sympathy for the Devil. A Nicolas Cage produced, Marcus watched and reviewed movie. Let's journey on a journey where we're taking this journey to a different journey. Someone else's journey, really. And that person's journey is Nicolas Cage and James. Sympathy for the Devil is a fantastic roller coaster ride through the dark and twisted mind of a man with nothing to lose. Shit. Oh, I hate these. Showcasing Nicolas Cage at his most eccentric best. Cage's performance, he killed it, y'all. He was the best part. He held the whole movie on his shoulders. From Nicolas Cage's mastery of accents, which if anybody knows Nicolas Cage, nobody does an accent better than Nick. He used his skills and his abilities to convey the unpredictable nature of the main... Oh, he's not the main character. Of the guy, of the person who should have been the main character. Nicolas Cage carries the entire movie on his eccentric and outlandish shoulders with professional ease. Sympathy for the Devil starts quite strong. You're quickly greeted with subtle world building through a believable conversation between our main character, James, and his expecting wife, who is already at the hospital. It's one of the things that you don't get a lot of anymore in movies. A genuine conversation between two people. And I loved it. The way Sympathy for the Devil starts was a breath of good old-fashioned movie-making fresh air. Within the first 10 minutes, we knew where our characters were, what motivated them. This movie gave us a subtle curiosity or hook that made us want to watch more. Holy shit. Okay, that one was great. The, <laughs> the nice part is, is there's going to be B-roll over parts where I'm just staring at this thing. There were hints that James was not the man that he claimed to be. And all of that was confirmed the moment our actor and savior, Nicolas Cage, entered the scene. As the two men begin their tense and violent journey, more mystery and details are shared about the character's past. We quickly get to ask ourselves, are these two men connected? Or is this a case of mistaken identity? One of the film's most noteworthy aspects is its attention to detail and its use of subtlety in character development. The writers respected you as smart enough to know what's going on without needing to spoon food, spoon food you, without needing, <laughs> without needing to speed. Oh shit, it's stuck in my head. I gotta get it out. Without needing to spoon. Oh god, come on, get it out. Okay, without needing to spoon feed you every detail of the plot like a baby eating mushed peas. Sympathy for the Devil refrains from that cliched expositional dialogue that you see in every movie made after 2012. Instead, of, instead the characters converse like real people, dropping hints and clues about their lives and motivations. These small touches add to the depth of the movie illustrating that it's the finer points that make a movie truly work. However, and I mean however, Sympathy for the Devil isn't without its flaws. The repetitive nature of the certain narrative points becomes tiresome, as the film revisits the same conflicts and situations multiple times without significant expansion or development. This lack of character depth and storytelling innovation ultimately limits the movie's potential. At the end of a flaw comes what works, and the tension buildup in the film is well executed. There are moments where you really don't know what Nicolas Cage's character is going to do. These tense moments of chaos can only be broken up by Nicolas Cage's eccentricity. Signature eccentricity. Jesus. Who wrote this? Which, <clears throat> which, which provides, I did, which provides a much needed release. From his scary and intense facial expressions 
to his spur of the moment surpri surprise on the director choice of hair color, Nicolas Cage is the movie's golden goose. Any shortcoming of the film is fully forgiven the moment you see Nicolas Cage do what Nicolas Cage does best. Act. I'm not kidding. I love Nicolas Cage as an actor. If you don't, you're doing it wrong. Go buy a Nickelback CD. Nick dances, he sings, he scares you to your core in this movie. Sympathy for the Devil is a callback to the glory days of Cage, where his wild expressions and what will he do next acting style kept you happy and entertained. The film manages to touch on some deeper themes, particularly regarding the use of violence as a means to an end. Nicolas Cage's character perfectly embodies the idea that violence is merely a reaction to obstacles hindering one's goals. Devoid of charm or logic, this portrayal challenges conventional Hollywood notions of the charming antagonist and instead presents a man driven solely by his determination, similar to the latest Joker movie. When an actor makes the bad guy relatable to the audience, they deserve to get the credit. By the end of this movie, I found myself cheering on Nick to win. In summary, Sympathy for the Devil may not have reached its full potential due to some repetitive narrative elements and underdeveloped characters. But through Nicolas Cage's captivating performance and the film's subtle attention to detail, it makes Sympathy for the Devil a worthwhile movie to watch, especially for fans of the Cage. This movie reminds us that sometimes it's the small details that make the biggest impact. Not every movie needs to be a multi-million dollar CGI extravaganza. I give Sympathy for the Devil five and a half titties out of ten. For a couple bucks on Amazon, you can have a great movie that will not leave you disappointed. Thank you guys for being here, and I'll see you on the next Marcus Reviews Movies. See ya.